Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. Here's your host, Stacey Jones. Welcome to Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I'm Stacey Jones, and I'm so happy to be here with you all today. And I want to give a very warm welcome to Zach Day. Zach is the founder and creative director of Brand U Media, a video agency dedicated to empowering purpose-driven entrepreneurs and coaches to make an even bigger and more massive impact on the world. With extensive experience as a film director, he's helped numerous entrepreneurs unlock their mission-driven story and build content that enables targeted audiences to connect and relate on a whole new level. Zach's unique three-step process helps clients connect with their ideal audience and build an engaged community around their message. And additionally, he hosts the entrepreneurial podcast right now show podcast. Today, Zach and I are going to be chatting about the challenges entrepreneurs face in the digital world and the steps to connect with your ideal audience and build a connection. We'll learn what works from Zach's perspective, what should be avoided, and how some businesses miss the mark. Zach, welcome. So happy to have you here today. Thank you. That was quite the intro. I'm like taking notes in my head. I'm like, because I have my own podcast. I'm like, yo, I should probably do my intros kind of like that too. That was that was <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So what I always like to do is start out, how did you get here today? Because our listeners are going to be in for a little bit of surprise because you've had a different journey than most. Yeah. So right now, you know, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I help tell people's stories to the world. But, you know, how did I get to that point? It's the story it didn't really start where you'd, you know, you'd expect. I started uh, doing American Ninja Warrior when I was 15 years old. And if you guys don't know what American Ninja Warrior is, it's basically like rock climbing, parkour and free running, if you guys know what that is, and gymnastics, like all put together. And they form something called American Ninja Warrior, where it's the hardest obstacle course in the world. And there's different regions throughout the country and people compete at these regions and you come together in Las Vegas and the top 100 athletes compete on the hardest obstacle course um, in the world. And, you know, I, I did that for about four years and, you know, how did that lead me to filmmaking? Right. So I, um, you have to make a submission video to get on the show. So it's like a three minute video and it's kind of like what I do now. It's almost like a brand story. You know, you have to show your personality off. You have to tell your story to the viewers and, you know, you have to betray why you should be on this show. So I had to do that. And I've really, I've been kind of making videos my whole life. Like even in like middle school, like I would, be the kid out with my iPod making pranks in class with my iPod. Um, and, you know, I've, I've just always, you know, pulled out the camera and made videos, edited videos kind of my entire life. And then American Ninja Warrior kind of got me into that because I started making videos on myself, like the highlights of what I would do and post it on social media. And then um, it's a little bit about the journey on American Ninja Warrior. I did that for about eight years. When I was 19, they actually changed the age limit from 21 to 19. And uh, when I turned 19, so I got my chance to compete. And at the time, I was one of the top prospects, I guess you could say, in the world because I was winning local competitions. There was other leagues that I was doing really well in. I even placed number one in the biggest league. So I pretty much knew I was going to get my shot to compete. But um, at that time, right before I went on the show, my father actually passed away. And uh, literally three weeks before I went on the show, and I actually got the call at my dad's funeral um which was i mean it was awesome that i got to go on the show but all this kind of happened at the same time you know my dad passed away and he was the biggest mentor in my life like really amazing family man and, um, really supported me in every single way and then three weeks later i'm competing on national television you know prime time nbc and you know i get to go for my dream basically and uh so i ended up doing really well um i got past the first two rounds I made it to Las Vegas. I was the youngest one ever to make it to Las Vegas at the time. And uh, I remember the, the there's four stages in Las Vegas. Stage number one, um, it was it was a really hard course for me because, uh, can you hear, still hear me? Mm -hmm, I can. Okay, good. Um, yeah, it was a really hard course for me just because of the, the style of the course. And I remember I had like four seconds left. And uh, I remember slamming the buzzer and I had a 4BD on the back of my shirt, which stands for for Brian Day. And uh, so I, that was kind of like the proudest moment of my life because I got to dedicate that run to him. So and then I went on with the stage two, um, got really deep in that stage. Um, and I ended up getting rookie of the year that year, got, got inside the top 10. 
And then kind of how that led me down the filmmaking journey, I ended up starting another business where we built Ninja Warrior courses in people's backyards, um, summer camps in their basements. So that was kind of like the first business I created. And I used to do a lot of films marketing for that. You know, I had a drone, I would put it up in the air and I would just kind of show off what we did and I would market just like that. That's how we got most of our business. And then after that, I created an online platform where we taught, you know, people that aspiring Ninja Warriors, kids and adults um, online, you know, how to do the obstacles, like how to do the warp wall and the salmon ladder, how to train your grip strength, how to balance the mindset of Ninja Warrior, the, the certain strategies that you want to apply to American Ninja Warrior. So I created that online platform, teamed up with a film crew. They taught me a bunch of stuff. And uh, that's kind of how I got introduced to filmmaking. And then I started doing some outside work that wasn't really involving um, Ninja Warrior for, you know, other businesses. And then I ran into my, what, my business partner now, which we actually met through Ninja Warrior, started doing work for him. And then he actually called me up one day and he asked me if I wanted to become business partners with it, with him. And that's pretty much how we got here. And, you know, then we kind of jumped around a little bit in the different styles of filmmaking, like doing a bunch of social media content, Instagram reels, TikTok. And now we're more into telling people's stories, kind of like they're like, I kind of almost put someone's life story in inside a two to five minute video, um, like their ups and downs of life, the impact that they want to make why they do what they do. And I put it inside almost like a mini documentary, like a mini movie of their life. And so when you're working with a client and you're trying to figure out how to tell their story and, and what their story is, what's that process? How do you get started with them? Yeah. Um, I mean, first we just do book a call and we, uh, we just ask them to tell tell them tell us their story, and we just kind of ask the deep, hard questions, and you know what they went through in their life, what they overcame, the conflicts, the struggles that they went through, um, why they do like why do they do that certain thing, like what does it mean to them, um, what's their target audience, all that kind of thing. And we have a very particular process that we take them through with you know those deep questions and kind of a formula that we follow for our video. So it engages the viewer the, the entire time. It makes them very curious about you. And so all of this, your life story encapsulated in two to three minutes as far as the yeah. video goes. That's a lot yeah. of information. Right. Um, and all of the people you're working with are very mission driven, are they not? That's kind of your yes. specialty? Yes, definitely. And so who are the types of, like, what are the types of people that you're working with? Like, what are they trying to do in life? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think it's for anybody that has that, like, has a big passion, has a big purpose in life. Like, I think, in my belief, God has given us, you know, a very particular skill, a gift, so to speak. And it's for really anyone who wants to bring that, that gift to life and make a bigger impact with it, do something that's bigger than themselves. So whether it's for, you know, impacting other people or helping someone in a very, very particular thing, anybody like that. So, I mean, it could be motivational speakers. It could be um, entrepreneurs. I've done bodybuilders before. I've done people in the real estate industry. So anywhere in there. Okay. And when you are working with them, is it hard for people to come up and figure out what these major moments are in their life that cohesively tell or how, how difficult is it? Um, you know, it really depends on the person. Like sometimes I would say yes. And sometimes people know exactly what their story is because they've said it a bunch of times. A lot, a lot of times people in the industries that I work with, they're constantly telling their story, you know, to people that they network with, but they don't have a video that portrays that story, you know, where they can put it on social media and, and reach a lot more people or they could throw it in inside their, their email inbox. And, you know, when they send an email out, that person that receives the email can just hit that link. And that now they know their whole life story. Now they, they can truly connect and relate to them like never before. And I think that's the key words here. You're saying connecting and relating like never before yeah. where you are instantly opening up the door. And it's like all of our listeners just now, you know, they heard your life story. They, yeah. you know, I teared up as you're talking about your father. You know, I thought about my own father and his passing and how difficult it would have been to actually work on such a physically exertion um, where yeah. your dream in life is coming true and you're on national television, but at the same time, the man that you wanted to have at your side wasn't there. 
That's a very yeah. poignant part of your story. And mm. so when you're telling these things, um, the level of connection where you're no longer looking at someone as just a service provider or a professional or a creator of a brand, you are now actually mm. relating to them on a whole new level. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's that, that connectability. And when someone, you know, shares, you know, their life story with you and, and not just the good parts, but the bad parts too, and the things that they overcame and their biggest struggles and setbacks, when people share that, you can tell that it comes from the heart, not the mind. And when, and you can kind of pick that up in, in people's tonalities and their body language and the emotion they put behind their words. And when you could betray that on video, it can be a game changer. And you, can, you can really, you know, really touch a person. And I think that a lot of our listeners might be sitting here going, hmm, do I have something that is, you know, a big enough, a significant enough why? Yeah. And that's the whole point, that why. Um, because mm -hmm. you can tell a life story and you can have a wonderful and a fascinating life. But if you haven't mm -hmm. actually in your business encapsulated what the why is that's driving you, what you're actually trying yeah. to achieve, that's more than just making money, that's more than selling widgets, that's more than just coaching people, then there's a miss and your audience feels that, correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, that's one of the big things that we kind of go over because I'm we're not just like a, a media company. I'm not just a filmmaker. I'm not just a person who carries a fancy, you know, fancy camera equipment around. I help you craft that story. Like we get together, we have we have a pre-production call where we we dive deep into your why. We're gonna find out what your why. So we help you do that. We help you craft that story and you know, tell the story that you want to tell, that you tell the story that you want to tell other people so you can truly connect with them. And so you said you have a three-step process. And I know the first step starts off with an interview and talking to them. Where do you go yeah. from there? Yeah. So, I mean, step number one is the pre-production call, like I just said. Number two is where I would come to you. I always come to my clients because I want to capture them in their environment. So I'll come to you and we shoot for two to three days and we'll do an interview where I'll sit you down for 45 minutes, an hour. And we, we ask those deep questions, kind of like the pre-production call, but a little different. And we help you tell your story in a very particular way. So normally it's like, you know, 45 minutes, an hour interview, and I'll condense that interview into three minutes in the video. And then we also do a podcast where we can capture extra content and we can go a little bit deeper into your story in a different way in the podcast, because now it's more conversational. So we'll do a, like kind of like a Joe Rogan style podcast when we come out and then we capture a bunch of B-roll scenes. So it's almost like three, four, five different movie scenes that we um, orchestrate, you know, what you typically do in a day, anything that makes you unique, that's what we're going to film. So say if you go to the gym, we're going to have a gym scene. Um, say if your family means a lot to you, maybe we have your family around the fire cooking some more. Maybe that's one of the scenes. So, yeah, we can get really creative with it. And then we come back. The last step would be um, production where I come and I uh, or I go on my computer and I edit the video where I add all the, the music, the emotional music. I'd, I normally add multiple songs so we can take you all throughout different feelings and emotions throughout the video, um, sound design, all that kind of stuff. So. Yeah, it's kind of the process. And so where are some of the hurdles that people have to do with this? Is it that they're camera shy and so they don't feel like they're themselves? Like, how do you get to mm -hmm. work with people to make them feel like this is something that is a natural organic part of who they are? Yeah. So, I mean, obviously it's not for everyone. Not everyone wants to put their life story out there. So, I mean, it, it's a very particular person, but yeah, we do have a process or I just, it, it's just kind of the, the vibe that I portray when I, when I do someone like when, say, for example, when I'm interviewing someone, I'm not like with my phone with questions out in front of me, like, um, you know, what's the biggest thing that you struggle with? I, I, it's very conversational. It's almost like I'm just having a conversation with them. So it's, it's really my job to get you comfortable in front of the camera. That's, that's kind of what, you know, I'm hired to do, so to speak. So yeah, I mean, it's not for everybody, but yeah, we uh, we try to make it as comfortable as possible. And so as you're going through there, are there any other tips or tricks that you could share with our listeners on how they could better themselves figure out their stories and put it at least pen to paper or um, self-record? Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, podcasts are a great way to start out. 
um, you could start your own podcast or you could start, you know, kind of what we're doing right now and like start getting interviewed by people because at the end of the day, you're going to be telling your story over and over again on the podcast. I think that's a great way to start out. I mean, if you want to put, start putting yourself out there on social media, just bring out your phone, like shoot some selfie videos. You don't even need to put them out, so to speak. You know, you could just say, I'm, you know, you want to have a challenge. I'm just going to shoot a one minute video every day and I'm just going to talk and, and say what's on my mind or have very, you know, topics that I want to talk about. And, you know, you could start that way. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that that's kind of two ways to start out. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really up to you. If you, if you want to make a bigger impact, you know, going online and, and putting yourself out there on social media and telling your story, um, it could make a big impact. And so once you've created the content and chopped it up so that you do have the social media that you can do yeah. and share out from there, sure. um, how do you go about marketing this? Because I think that's part of your leg of strategy as well, of actually getting this content in front of people so that they're able to see it. Yeah, I mean, we do that sometimes where uh, we'll take over someone's social media. We kind of give them a, uh, a social media manager to speak. Um, it's not necessarily our forte, but um, that brand story, that's where we want to shoot everyone towards. Because once they watch that video, they're either going to be a fan of you or they're not. And it's okay if they're not, then you're just not, not work, meant to work together. But we want to shoot them right at that brand story and the social media assets. Think of you know the brand story as like a table. And the legs on the table are basically the social media assets pointing right to that brand story. So that could be podcast clips. That could be the, the lifestyle reels that you see on TikTok and Instagram that have that trending audio behind it. Or it could just be other videos that just, you know, represent what you stand for, maybe some professional photos. But yeah, we want to have, you know, content to back up that brand story and point them right at it. That's kind of our strategy, so to speak. Are there any mistakes that you see that are common that people make with this? Um, you know, as far as, you know, content and stuff like that, I, I think people are trying to be somebody else. They're trying to say what people want them to say. They're trying to maybe try to follow the algorithm, so to speak. And they're, and they're trying to portray themselves in a way that they actually aren't. So I would say them just being someone that they're not, you know, you got to be yourself because that's what people are really going to connect to. And with all of that you're doing, have you seen that there's a certain type of individual that does this best? I would say someone that's, that's willing to put themselves out there. That's willing to speak from the heart, not the mind. Someone that's really willing to be authentic. Um, and, and, you know, someone that's, that has a very exciting life and has a good story is, is always better, right? Of course. And so what are other <laughs> things that you can share with our listeners today on how they should be approaching this journey of telling their own story? Yeah, I mean, I think a, a good step is to just write it out, you know, get, you know, pen and paper and just write out what is your story and start asking yourself the hard questions like, who are you? What do you stand for? What is your purpose? What impact do you want to make? Um, and one thing that I've learned at one of the events that I just went to is start with the end in mind. Like when your life is all said and done, you know, say you're sitting on your deathbed, what, have, what do you, what in your life did you want to experience? You know, what's everything you wanted to experience? What did your life mean? What are other people saying about you? Um, I think that's a great way, you know, asking yourself the really hard questions. And that's something that a lot of people have done. You know, they'll sit down and they'll try to write their own um, life recap um, yeah. so that they can figure out where they want to end up and be. And it is, it's a great way to goal set um, because yeah. it's, it's depressing as all hell, but, you know, mm. it's a great way to forecast yourself out and take a look to see, you know, do you want family? Do you want business success? How do you want other people mm. to actually see you in your life? And how are you going to show up? in order to actually create that story ahead of you. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the last event that I went to, we actually, we all had to write our own eulogy. That was one of the exercises, which is a very deep thing. It's sad. And we kind of had to write it in, you know, as if we were like a family member writing it for us. Um, and it's a tough thing to do. It's very emotional. But at the end of the day, like, you really do find out what you want this life to mean. And then that's, that's huge. And a lot of people along the way have a tough trouble doing this because mm -hmm. their life is not actually aligned to the story that they're hoping to be able to read one day. Yeah. And I think uh, there's something to be said where people are trying to control their life and they're 
trying they're really they're running away from the fear and i think you have to go into the fear and uh you're, you're not going to be able to control everything in your life you know you kind of just have to you have to flow with life instead of trying to try to you know grab it you kind of have to re release it and kind of go wherever life takes you um that's kind of like the beauty of life Yes, there's several um, spiritual beliefs that say that you bend uh, to resist the bend and to go with the flow, um, with exactly. go with the way. Yep, exactly. Do you think Ninja uh, Warrior helped teach you that? Uh, I, I think I think in some ways, yeah. Um, I think after Ninja Warrior, I think I, I captured that even more, though, even more so after I kind of to look back and see what I went through. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I just, you kind of just have to take whatever life gives you and you just got to one step in front of the other. You just got to grow a little bit each day and, you know, just, just keep going. And so Zach, how can our listeners find you if they're like, Hmm, I'm interested in this. I'd like to know how you can help me with my life story. Yeah. I think the, the best way is, uh, I mean, you can either go on my website, it's mybrandu.com. Or uh, my Instagram is probably the best way to reach me immediately. It's I am Zach Day. Um, Zach spelled with an H. Um, that's probably just reach out to me on DM, ask me a question. We could hop on a call and, you know, see if we see if we're a good fit for each other. And <laughs> any parting words of advice to our listeners today? I mean, I think you just encapsulated it extremely well about seizing the day, but anything yeah. else? Uh, I'm a, so my podcast is called the right now show. So I'm i I'm really big in just like staying in this present moment and not trying to let the, the past or the future hold us back. Like not try to put my attention there, but really just stay in this moment because this moment is really the only thing that exists. It's the only thing that we can possibly control. So, um, yeah, stop trying to stop trying to fight the path in the future and just stay right here right now. And, uh, yeah, just one step in front of the other. Well, Zach, thank you so much for sharing your thoughts today with us. And I believe in a line with your mentality and the same belief structures. And I think that you are helping people unleash potential that they might not even know that they have. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Of course. And to all of our listeners, thank you for tuning in to another <laughs> episode of Marketing Mistakes and How to Avoid Them. I look forward to chatting with you this next week. And until then, if you have any interest in not so much your own brand story, but perhaps about your brand getting interwoven into other people's content through product placement and movies and TV shows, influencer marketing, or partnerships through pop culture and events and celebrities, please reach out to my agency, Hollywood Branded, and we will connect and make a plan. Have a great one. I'll look forward to speaking with you this next week.